All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this PNY uh, Prevail Pro. Um, this is a mobile workstation model P4000. So first what you want to do is remove all the screws from the bottom. They use a PH or a J1. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, these two screws hold in the keyboard um, and there's some more screws underneath the keyboard. Uh, looks like this is kind of like a eject spot as well so you probably use like a small tool to push through um, the screw the screw hole and that'll push up on the keyboard um, but you don't really need to do that if you have a thin pry tool so what you do is you take the thin pry tool and between the keyboard and the speaker grill um, you just insert it there um, if you slide the tool along you'll feel like where it's there's a bump um, and that's like the clip holding it in place and that's where you'll have to pry it Okay, so once you pry it up, um, just try and hold it up with your other hand, okay? And then just go along, find the other clips, and then do the same thing, okay? Just do that. We feel the clip, just pry it up. All right, on the clip. And just pop it up, okay? All right, so just go along, do the other side as well. All right, just like that. Make sure you get the tool between, okay? And then once you get the the whole back pried up, you can flex the keyboard. I like to use the my hands and kind of twist it a little bit, so that way the side clips here will get pulled away. Um, once you do that, uh, I don't know if you probably won't be able to see this, but there's clips under here. So just flip the little latch up, and then you can push that cable aside. There's another one for the backlight cable. Um, same thing, flip it up, and then you can pull it out. Okay, just like that. All right, so after you remove the keyboard, um, you'll see there's some more screws. So there's one here, two, three, four, and then one right here. So remove those five screws. And then what I like to do, um, just in case these parts under here, the um, cables are being held by something underneath, I'll unlatch these. Okay, so there's, there's three, there's four of these cables here. All right, so I'll just unlatch those. After that, you can close the screen back, flip it over, all right? And then on this side, I like to use the pry tool for the front and then just lift it up slightly. Be careful with the little um, LED, the plastic parts that help with the light. So just lift up the cover, all right? And then once you get that up, um, you can go around with your fingernails and you can lift the rest of the cover, okay? You can undo the other clips just like this. All right. All right. Once you do those clips, then you can actually lift the cover up just like this and the whole thing will come out. All right. Once you remove that, um, you'll want to remove the key, um, not the keyboard, the battery. Um, so there's two screws, one here and one here. All these screws seem to be about the same size, um, but either way, I don't like to mix them up. Um, so just to be safe, make sure that you keep the screws in order. Okay, once you remove the two screws, um, it's actually uh, hooked underneath on the bottom for the battery. So what you wanna do is lift up the front here, okay? Just like this slightly. And then while you're lifting that, you can pull the battery connector out, okay? Once you do that, you can actually pull the battery up and away just like that. All right, and then to be safe, usually what you do, um, when the cover's off, you wanna be extra careful because the hinges aren't held as tight. So just open it slowly. And then you can hold the power button for several seconds just to make sure any power is drained. Usually 30 seconds to be safe, but about 10, 20 seconds is good enough. All right. So once you do that, hold the power button, drain it. Um, if you want to remove this hard drive, there's one screw holding it in place here. So it also uses a Phillips PH1 or J1. Um, this is a smaller screw. Um, the way they designed this, um, this connector is kind of tough to remove. Um, the best way I found to do that is you pull the connector back a little bit. Um, if you pull too hard, this black cover will kind of come away from the rest of the connector. So the best way I found is you get the thin pry tool and then um, when you pull the connector back, you'll see where it connects here. Um, just insert the thin pry tool there and then twist it to pry just a little. Don't pry too much because you want to do it evenly and then go to the other side and then pry this side, okay? Just like this, all right. 
Okay, so now that you got the connector slightly out, you can lift here so that you can get it up. And then you can pull this connector. Be careful that you don't bend this cable too much. Okay, and then use the gap there to kind of pull it away just like that. So there's your hard drive. This has a two terabyte, um, uh, 2.5 inch SATA drive. You can upgrade this to an SSD if you want. Um, and then there's also an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here. So you remove that one screw and you can slide this thing out. Um, this I believe is a 512 gig. Um, then you can see the RAM here. So this is um, PC4, this is a 16 gig chip. So this has actually 32 gigs of RAM. All right. All right, then you can see the wireless antennas like every other model to pull it up. You do have to undo this adhesive and then just near the end of the tail close to the connector, you just pop it up, it'll come up at an angle. To pop it back down, you just line it up directly over and push, push the connector down. Okay, so I'm not gonna take all of this out because the main thing I need to do is just uh, migrate everything from another computer onto this SSD, but just wanted to show what's inside this computer. So you can see there's three fans. It looks like you can remove the fans without, actually no, looks like the fans are tucked underneath. So to remove the fans, you probably have to take the whole heatsink out or at least the logic board. Um, then we got, what is this connector for? Hmm. I'm not too sure what these other connectors are for. This is an LCD connector, fan connector, two other fan con or two other fan connectors. This looks like the speaker connector. Um, and this board is separate, the SD card with the USB and audio jacks. If you take these the two screws here out and then the other two screws, you can actually pop this up. Um, this there's a connector right underneath this this part of the board. Okay, um, it looks like there's another slot here. I'm not sure what that's for. Hmm. Oh, a 3G LTE card. So that's for like mobile broadband. Okay, and it looks like the, um, the GPU is here. And then this is the CPU heatsink. So if you need to, for some reason, take it out and redo the paste. Um, this USB board is a separate board as well. You can see the connector here. So the two connectors, I think I disconnected underneath it's for the LED and then this and then there's another one that it's probably for this this board here okay let's see is there anything else oh actually not for this board it's for this board because this board is connected directly with that um, and that's for the um, Ethernet port okay um, but that looks like that's pretty much it I'm not gonna completely take the board out because Again, I'm just doing this to get to the SSD, um, but that hopefully this video should help you. Um, and if it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you for watching. All right. Oh, one other thing. There's the CMOS battery or I guess several other things. Then it looks like the trackpad buttons are separate and they got like all of these separate cables. I don't know why they separated everything, but I guess... Um, if one part breaks, it's easier. You can replace each one individually. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Again, please like and subscribe because that will help me. And yep, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.